Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to O-Talks, a webinar series that aims to inform and give insights about property, entrepreneurship, technology, and financial literacy. All subjects that are close to the heart of our prop tech company, Oh My Home. I'm Julian, Marketing Manager of Oh My Home Philippines, and I am excited to be your host for today. We are going to be talking about passive income opportunities for beginners. And for our lovely viewers out there, you can chalk you can check out the Oh My Home app on both Apple and Google Play stores for all your property needs. As we go along the show, please feel free to put in your comments in the comment sections below so that we can get to answering your questions. And without further ado, let me introduce our guests for this episode. Okay, our first guest is Mr. Noli Alieje, known in the real estate industry as El Subastejero. Noli Alieje heads the Property Forum Philippines, the leading auctioneer in the country today. He has also produced the first real estate television show in the country. A pioneer of the auction sale system in the Philippines, he has bid out over 4,000 real estate assets worth more than 8 billion pesos. Having gained substantial marketing expertise after handling various property developers, he now heads the international promoter recruitment for Lanco Pacific Corporation. Through the years, he has acquired all kinds of real estate, becoming an expert in industry strategies such as fixing, leasing, and flipping. All right, for our next guest, um, our second guest is Miss Dinah Rose Persebe. She has almost a decade of real estate experience, and she started as the head of customer relations in one of the top developers in the Philippines. Now, with the Vida Land Corporation, she has handled the commercial and leisure projects, corporate sales group, and is currently managing the Metro South team of the broker operations group. Surprisingly, her undergrad was pre-medical in Central Escolar University, and she took her master's in business administration in the Ateneo Graduate School for Business. So please welcome Mr. Noli Alieje and Ms. Dina Persebe. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. And uh, the million of viewers, hello. <laughs> good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for having me, Julian. Yeah, so good afternoon, Mr. Noli, Ms. Dina. I hope all of you, both of you are doing well. On behalf of yes. All My Home, uh, we'd like to thank you for joining us uh, today and taking time from your busy schedules. I'm sure our viewers are dying to know um, all about passive income. But before that, I'd just like to ask both of you how you're doing uh, thus far. How's your, how has your 2020 been? Well, uh, um, go ahead, Dina. Okay, so 2020 was really unexpected because of, you know, what happened. Um, the, the pandemic really, it was a test of uh, character, not just for me, but for, especially if you're married and you're just in, in, in the same house. I mean, uh, I've learned so many things. I've learned how to cook. I've learned how to manage my patients. So when it comes to, I don't cook. Sir Nolly, ha? sorry, yeah. I just do my makeup lang. <laughs> How about you, uh, Sir Nolly? Any anything that uh, something about your twenty twenty want to share? Well, I you know I have normally had a lot of my one on one webinars, uh, seminars. Uh, not one on one. I mean, normally Mega Mall or you know SMR ka you mag ano, no? <clears throat> So it shifts all of a sudden when we went on lockdown on March thirteen. The first thing I did was slide down, get some chips. <laughs> Coke, Coke Zero and watch Netflix for two weeks, you know. <laughs> then after that, I I got a uh, a platform for doing webinars, and I started being active, you know. And sometime in May or June, I you know, I don't know, like, uh, MECQ. Right. Uh, I I already went out at that time. I I could not contain myself. You see, you're always on the field, don't no? then you're just stuck home, you know. So I went out and started buying uh, properties. <laughs> you know, wow. see, I was able to get very good deals during that time. No? And then because of our That's webinars, true. we were able to bring in a lot of, you know, buy, build, sell, uh, co-developers in our group. So I, not for anything, I don't want to say this, you know, but uh, I had a very good 2020, you know, and I'm looking forward to even a better 2021. I look back and I say, when everybody was lying down watching Netflix, I stood up and started running around. 
<laughs> good to know, good to know. And, yeah. and I hope that um, both of you can share uh, inspiring or motivational stories or even lessons during our um, discussion today. Because um, our audience would most like, uh, are likely to uh, um, get uh, sound advice on the what, what passive income um, they may be able to pursue during this um, time. Especially it's 2021, new start, right? So um, thank you so much again for um, answering that first question. But let's get to the matter at hand. So I'll be throwing you um, several questions about passive income. And um, please feel free to take the question. So let's start off first with a basic one. Um, what is passive income? And I'd like you to also um, uh, help our viewers understand how is this different from income and investments that are we are usually familiar with? Um, uh, should I answer it first, sir? Uh, okay. Okay. So passive income, really simply put, is, is something that you earn without putting a lot of work. Uh, like you can say that this is like the opposite of an active income. Normally, act, um, active income, these are the income that you get uh, with work and with trading. So um, active, um, the passive income would be another source from your main source, which is work. Our business. So these are the things that, like, uh, it could be uh, leasing. Uh, mostly, it's leasing, and it could be your real estate, uh, um, stock exchange, mga things like that. Yeah, that, that's yeah. true. Um, care to weigh in on this um, on this question also? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I I think uh, Diana uh, picked it up the right way. No, it's. Passive income is doing not too much work. Mm -hmm. But for you to reach that level of having a passive income, there is a lot of work to do, right? Because um, right, right. uh, rental income is one of the most famous passive incomes, right? Uh, truly. But before you can buy that unit that you can rent out, you really have to do a lot of work. Huh? So it's something that you work for that you'll be able to have and enjoy passive income one day. So, kailangan may trabaho pa din, eh, no? Hindi mo talaga masasabing it's only passive income, di ba? There's big work before the passive comes in. It's like the the planting of the of the farm, no? You have to plant muna, harvest before you can harvest. Ang maganda na sa passive income, when you start harvesting, you harvest for a long time, no? Mm -hmm. It's not okay. like when you, when you farm, Trabaho, araro, you know, and then after that, boom, harvest. Then araro, <laughs> di ba? I like, you know, when you buy a unit, uh, if it's 10 years to pay, you worked your butt out for 10 years, you know? Then after that, you sit down and enjoy it for 30 years. So mm -hmm. that, I would say, pero siyempre may konti pa rin, ano, may konti pa rin trabaho pag kahit pero kang passive income. I guess that, that that feeds in nicely to my next question about the araro and farming analogy, uh, But um, so uh, my next question would be, what would be the advantages of having passive income? And would you say that it's, uh, especially in times like these, like the uncertain year, the uncertain times, um, is it necessary for people to have these uh, kinds of income? Uh, and in um. Okay, ladies okay. first. Okay. Uh, <laughs> beauty before the beast. <laughs> beauty before the beast. <laughs> no, it's 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 a good thing that uh, the title of the our our show today is uh, for beginners because uh, also as I'm as you said I'm a speaker I'm also learning a lot from uh, Sir Nolly, no. So um, now you're asking what are the advantages of having a passive income? I think. Um, having a passive income is essential because this is your next step toward building your wealth mm -hmm. um as we all know we cannot well like so sir sir nolly saying um let the the young see it first but i'm not young forever i will not be young forever and it's good when you're young and full of energy uh you could um 
you can get the the active income but eventually we will all get old and uh you have to stop working and uh when you stop working and you cannot work anymore you would still need some um money or uh you still need to spend so when our body when our body's telling us not to work anymore or you cannot work anymore even if our minds want to uh, what will happen is uh, our passive income will come in so I think that's the advantage of uh, having uh, a passive income. Uh, Sir, that, that, yeah, that, after that, the youth. Yeah. <laughs> the beast. <laughs> the beast. No, actually, uh, let me go back maybe even to the times of my parents, you know, or our parents. I mean, I don't know, maybe your grandfathers. <laughs> but, you know, um, at that, during their time, it was more of, retiring you know and at the end of their retirement phase was just living within their savings you know and hopefully that their children can help them tide over until the day that they meet their creator during our time you know and the masa today it was working hard you know sss retirement gsis retirement pension you know pumasok na kasi during our time insurance was patay ka lang you know? uh, there was, <laughs> There was none what you call the earnings. So I think today I'm quite surprised at the age of 25, 26 people, you know, which I think are the millennials watching now, you know, they're already talking about passive income. Correct. Said, yes. <laughs> That's right. I, I'm, already, I'm already 64 and I'm still thinking about what aggressive work I can do. No? Although, you know, Sepe, you have your your counting cambot sidekicks there, no? So <laughs> that, that, that's what works there. And you know, like Daniel say, it's something you can lean on. Especially now with this pandemonium you know, that we are experiencing, diba? I mean like wow, if you don't have that additional thing or you lost your job, but I have two condo units, you know, and I'm earning uh, passive income, it really gives you that peace of mind. Correct, correct. I, I like that word, pandemonium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're learning new things from Sir Noli Talaga. <laughs> right, right. Uh, expanding our vocabulary. <laughs> yes, that's right. And then, actually, it's correct that um that you mentioned that millennials right now are really um interested in how to grow their wealth through passive income. So I guess um perhaps I could ask both of you um about what basic knowledge does. Uh, these people need do these people need to know before deciding to invest Speci specifically if they're trying to invest in property or their first uh property for passive income purposes uh beauty sure I'll, uh, take the question again. <laughs> sure, I'll start again uh, yeah. uh you know uh, i work with a very young team and most of my team members are really are all millennials and they are very aggressive in uh investment in in doing investment okay the first thing i think you have to identify is uh which you you said is identifying what kind of investment do you do you want uh to start on like um if you're going to start on because there are several investments right mm -hmm. uh and with each investments you have to exert time effort and uh willingness to invest the financial cap capability and most importantly i think uh what is being neglected is the um investment literacy like okay millennial tends to be more aggressive like i've said and uh some are going to the stock market and you know stock market it has high yield and but it's also high risk. high risk so what will happen is uh you don't have to like know where to invest or there's a new investment that is open or there's a stock market that's open or oh, let's invest there it's not like that you have to um know the political there's it's it's not just like that eh? it's there's only outside factors there's the political there's the uh environmental factor so it's really um it's really uh, hard uh, to do the start stock market. There's also, I think, I, I think uh, I'll just touch on this, sir. Nolly, I mentioned. I'll just try to see this, like the bank, uh, the bank investment where you do the uh, um, time deposits and mm -hmm. other. Uh, it, it's it's low risk, but at the same time, it's low yield. So, which puts me to the. Uh, what I'm very passionate about. This is the 
low risk, I mean, low, uh, low risk and high yield, which is real estate. So um, with real estate, like, like, like Sir Nolly said earlier, uh, though there is effort that to be done uh, to, to achieve that, um, there is still uh, less, less yield, that, I mean, less uh, risk that you will be putting and more, and more um, yield that you may be getting. Thank you, Diana. How, how about um, um, want to wait on this uh, question also? Yeah, that's uh, very well praised about the risk and reward. No? Very, very nice point. No? Um, actually, if you really look around you, eh, a lot of people, especially today, uh, they investing just because you know, and so mama, they went with the what do you call this with the open house, you know, uh. and the friend signed up, so he signed up. You know, so when I asked them, uh, why did you invest? And he said, Wala lang. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I, I kind of get uh, surprised sometimes. You know? I, I, I think that uh, I've always believed that uh, property is prosperity. And you start off with real estate. Regardless of uh, what, what economic state you are in, you start off with real estate as your foundation for all your investments. Bakit? Kasi sabi nga ni Dinas, pinaka-safe yan. Risk, you know, it's actually risk-free, you know. And, you know, if you make a mistake, you know, a time will solve your real estate problem. Yun ang maganda sa real estate. Tapos yan, pag nagka-deluvio, you know, and the whole economy crashes, all your paper assets are worth paper. <laughs> but your real estate assets have one paper, the title of your land or the title of your condominium. Yeah, I would say always, you know, it's very safe. Especially if you're trying to build a family, you're building your wealth in the family. Yun, uh, real estate talaga, ano, pinaka-safe. Kasi kahit bumagsak yan, you know, uh, I've not seen today, until today, we've seen some price adjustments. Yeah, 10%, 15% on the secondary market, di ba? That's if you're not well financially planned. So, like he was, uh, Daniel say, uh, investment, ano, konting uh, utu, you know, on the investment management. It does really help. Right. Thank you so much. Um, so what I what I heard that the, the nice things I heard about your answers were uh, about managing risks, uh, the stock markets versus investing in real estate, and a uh, nice quote by Mr. Nolly about how property is prosperity. So now that we're at this stage, that these. Um, uh, young young people, or even not 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 that young people, people are interested in investing. Um, what advice, or what do you think, uh, in terms of resources? How much do these people would need as beginners um, to start investing? For example, um, not just monetary, but like the time and effort. Let's say they're looking for a real estate uh, property investment for their first one, and how long should they plan for it, and when should they begin? Okay, uh, so who who will answer first? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. So as a um, I, I work with Avida, and uh, we are very uh, hands on in assisting a client if they want to purchase any property. So currently, like like I've, I've said, uh, our clientele does not is not only to the those who are already in the middle or in the midway of their lives. Uh, we also have clients who are just starting to invest. And the good thing about this is our, um, our group, we handhold all the um, people who are, or the millennials who, are, who wants to um, who, who wants to uh, start their investment. Like uh, like I, I keep on saying, uh, the time and the effort really, uh, I think more than the time and the effort is really the determination to start. Because mm. uh, if you do not start, when are you really going to, to begin? Like me, uh, I started very late. I started my investment like four years ago. And um, I'm, I'm kind of approaching middle age. And I feel like, even if, if if I started earlier, you know, I, it could have been um, more opportunity for me to uh, acquire more. But uh, I'm really amazed of how the how the younger people uh, are doing it. They are very uh, they the the 
investment and the literacy that they have in uh, uh, in in investing is very good. I really admire how how they do it. So basically, the first part in all of this is the really the the power or the determination to start. Well said, well said. Um, how about you, Mr. Nolly? Well, uh, let, let's just say, uh, I always get that question. Sir, uh, in one of my webinars, it's always, sir, I want to start uh, real estate investment. How do I start? Mm -hmm. So, of you start first with pera. Well, I have pera. I think I can invest. So, have you set up your investment fund? Do you have your savings fund? You know, do you have your enjoyment fund? So you have to separate all your income and you start evaluating up to where can I come in. Do not force your entry. No? Mm. For example, now, I want to buy a unit with Avida. So the first thing is, what uh, kind of a reservation fee? Ay, okay. The reservation fee is very affordable. <laughs> <laughs> there you have a born sales lady, a sales woman. <laughs> you see? So, tapos yan, oh, uh, what are your payment terms? Payable over how many years? 30% down uh, over 36 uh, months? Or? Yeah, uh, no. Because, sir, if I may just. Yes, pre selling. We have uh, a project in uh, Tagaytay. We call it Serene, Serene Tagaytay. And the down payment is, is extended up to 60 months. Mm. There you are, 60 months, you see? So, can you sustain the 60 months? So, that's the thing you have to talk about your resources. And then after that, of course, we know the 61st month. Is bank turnover or unit turnover? So other bank fin or do you have the cash? So when you get there, even before you get there, you have to study now. Am I bankable? Have I paid all my credit cards? <laughs> you know, have I missed out on my insurance payments? Have I missed out even on my uh, cell phone calls? You know, or that really matter? Eh? Do I have an ITR? Do I have a uh, certificate of employment? So, ihahanda mo talaga yan. Hindi yung pwedeng, uh, on the 61st month, isipin mo na lang, oh, I need a bank takeout. No? So, yeah. buying real estate, easy as it is, has to be calculated. Ha? Kaya pinag-aralan mo talaga yan. Hindi pwede yung, ang charing, di ba? Real estate, di ba? Na, talaga, pipili ka talaga, pag-aaralan mo mabuti. No? So, you also have to know the reasons, you know, why you're buying real estate. Or you want to hold it? You know, some people just buy it and don't use it. They just leave it there. Why? Because they don't want anybody to use their banyo. They want, they want to be the first. And they're overseas Filipino workers, di ba? Para may bibinyag na yung banyo ko, hindi ako, di ba? I don't want anybody else to use my bathroom, my toilet, except me. You know? So they have this kink, you know? The other ones, um, they want to flip it, so they buy at pre-selling. They sell at a turnover after 60 months. Maybe, you know, Ayala, Avida, mga 60-70% yan ang, ang increase, no? What's your track record, uh, Dina? Uh, well, uh, in Makati South Point, there's a project in Makati, uh, and it was just launched two years ago. The increase is almost, like you've said, sir, 70%. There you are. Imagine that. Just on the pre-selling to, uh, to the turnover, you made already 70%. Mm -hmm. diba? So why keep saving if you can keep investing? Diba? Yes, so, that's right. Okay, yung mga pag mo talaga. Tapos the other one is okay. So the other last one is the rental. So we're done with the flipping from pre-selling to turnover. The other one, the rental, that's where you come in. This show, which is called passive income. So during the monthly amortization of your loan and you're renting out your unit, how much is the rental income versus your monthly amortization? I can tell you that right away, it will never be a self-liquidating investment. Bihira talaga yun. Bihira talaga. You have to top up on your equity for mm -hmm. it to become a self-liquidating. So, buy Abida. <laughs> yes, yes. And we have so many, uh, in, in the projects that I'm handling, we have so many uh, projects that has a longer pay term that they can avail of. Mm -hmm. 
I guess, um, well, actually, the answers you gave were very meaty, no? Um, and we'd like to dive in uh, more towards that. But I'd just like to acknowledge first uh, a few of the comments. Uh, actually, we've had really good questions in the comment section on our Facebook uh, page. But um, And to let you know, th the viewers know that we're going to be answering that at the end of the show after all of our questions. Um, it's just really um, encouraging that we have viewers all the way from... Uh, Singapore, actually, and Riyadh, as I see right now. We have OFW viewers right now. So thank you so much, mga kapwa Pinoy in other um, countries. And Quezon City, uh, a neighbor, <laughs> basically. So um, again, viewers, we'll get back to your questions. Um, our guests will answer them later on. Uh, but moving forward in our line of questions. So um, so for people who are, again, for people who are beginners, um, first-time investors, Right? Could could you uh, help them think of or, or how uh, how would they be earning or starting this journey while they are managing a full time job? Um, what would be their first steps, and what would be the picture of um, a successful passive uh, income na nila when, when they are um, still working in their uh, I guess nine to fives. Okay, so uh, I think what I, I can share my personal experience when it comes to this. I am a full-time employee of Avida Land, but I have two investments. One, uh, the one in BGC, where uh, we hold most of our projects, and another one in Tagaytay. Now, um, what I'm doing with my BGC property is I'm having it rented out. Uh, well, I haven't paid full uh, yet, but... Uh, Currently, the monthly amortization, I've been taking it from the uh, rental that I'm taking or I'm getting from the um, from the rent that I'm having right now. So technically, that is how passive income is working for me. I mean, it may work differently for maybe to the experiences of Sir Nolly, but for me, that's how it how, how it's affecting me personally. And uh, when when it comes to the the my property in Tagaytay. It's a different kind of uh, return of investment or passive income because it gives me the self gratification of going there every weekend in Tagaytay. Imagine um, with all of this, I because because I'm a, a condo dweller and um, you know I th this space is um, very minimal. So it's a good thing. It's a good um, reprieve for me. To go outside the, my personal space because my personal space has become my workspace too sometimes so it's a good reprieve for me to go to Tagaytay and um there this are the two um these are the two incomes that I'm getting the one is the financial and the other one is the self gratification of having um my own property Okay, let, let me uh, let me share my experience on on rentals. You know, uh, I never believed in rentals before. You see, sakit sakit ulo. I was always <laughs> in my mind. I I was more of a flipper. I buy, build, sell, buy, renovate, sell, or just buy, clean, sell. You know, that was basically my format always. You know, and when I started, I had one rental. So finally, you know, it was a house there in Valenzuela. So the the, it was ten thousand a month, and the tenant would call me. You know, say, hey, uh, your faucet is broken, and I would go there, you know, to get the faucet fixed. You say, hey, uh, the light in the corner of the house cannot be is uh, shut down, you know, and uh, we cannot reach it. So I have to go there with my stairs and everything. So I was so harassed. I said, my God, for ten thousand, I keep traveling there almost monthly, you know. Uh, I'm spoiled by Sadu yata in tenant or what. You know? <laughs> it's a learning experience, you see. Then after that, I, I put one more rental, and then one more rental, then we got commercial units, we put in rental. And then I started seeing, you know, that was a rap pala, you know. Uh, especially pag, you know, this month, you know, oh, we're not in benta. But we have rental income, you know. So it became very, very comfortable, you see. Uh, it's just that it's not an easy thing just because you say, ah, I will get one condo unit, diba? and then I will have it for rent. Tapos na, diba? Monthly, ano ka na? Every month, you will deposit it, no? 
No, you still have some responsibilities as a unit owner. You still have to go there to be sure that it's not damaging your unit. You have to inspect it once in a while. You, know, no? you have to get a developer when you buy a unit for rental to make sure that they have their what they call the rental management inside their office. No? And if they yes. have that, very good. You know, uh, less trouble. Uh, magbabayar ka ba ng konti, di ba, ng gano'n, no? Pero, wow. Talagang, uh, that's what I can call passive na. Di ba? Nabayaran mo na yung monthly amortization mo, nabayaran, may konti ka pang kita ng konti, tapos, wala kang sakit ng ulo. There's a problem, he calls you up, tenant calls you, you call up your tenant manager and say, hey, puntaan mo yung tenant ko, may problema siya. You know? My tenant has a problem, please solve it. So, that's better managed. Uh, um, thank you so much uh, for those. Julian, Julian yeah. can I add something? Sure, sure. Two things I just want to add. The first one is uh, the you, the passive income that uh, we're doing about talking about the rental. Uh, my father, um, he when when we, when we were younger, he would like buy properties in uh, all over Manila. Like he would buy properties, and we were like, why? That's that's. That would take out some portion of our inheritance if you keep buying. Because I was younger then, I didn't know. I didn't know about the uh, the leasing. I think it's just what it's twenty thousand. That's very minimal if if you if you keep the money and give it to us as an inheritance. But really now, um, he my father is almost eighty seven, and um, he's really he's in, he's in the states right now. But you know what? His his incomes keeps on building because of the properties that he has. And um, so maybe somehow maybe that's something I've learned from him, and uh, we're we're living we're living it to, we're living it up. And then another thing that uh, Sir Nolly mentioned is about the uh, leasing or the some uh, the leasing manager that he will have um, if you buy a property. That's the good thing also about Avida. Um, we we have. Uh, an uh, in-house uh, property management team, which we call APMC, and they make sure that everything is in place, everything is in order. So basically, what you really do is just um, uh, when you buy a property, this is all part and package of the uh, of the property that you are getting. I think at this point, I just like to since we're all you, just, you opened up the topic about your own personal experiences. Uh, I'd like to ask, because I was curious um, at the start of the show, sabi ni Noli that during June, I think, or, or after you were binging on chips in Netflix, you stood up <laughs> and started buying property. Could you tell us about that? Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, no, give you a background. No? I said, you know, property is prosperity. And mm. foreclosures is my choice. You see, I'm a foreclosure man. Uh, most of my investments are really in foreclosures. What we normally do, my strategies, which my, my children told me was, Papa, don't give us basura. You know, because they say that foreclosures are basura. That's why I always buy basura properties. That's why sometimes people that call me only El Subastajero, they call mm -hmm. me El Basurero also. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, the strategy was to buy trashy properties, dirty, dilapidated, foreclosed, get really good values from there, and then sell it, and then portions of that invest it in new properties new developers like Abida, you know, no? and then buy again from the old ones. No? So uh, as I mentioned, no, uh, the lockdown on March 13, I practically spend 18 hours a day in the street, you know, driving mm -hmm. around, looking at properties. I'm I'm very ma uh, malikot, you know, uh, I can't stay in one place. And after March 13, as I mentioned, I lay down, you know, I watch that thing. But after two weeks, I said, my God, <laughs> I'm gonna rot like this and I'm gonna die early, you know. So I got up, I, I applied for an IATF uh, pass, I was able to get one, you know, and I went out and I started shopping for properties because I knew that it was the best time to buy for properties. In fact, I saw some developers at the time, huh? they were selling at 2.5% at to move in, you know, on their RFOs. It was an RFO sale. Ready for occupancy sale, no? so a lot of people were buying ready for occupancy sales. Plus, I I heard of one developer seventy two months to pay on down payment. You know, wow! wow. But then, those were the best times to buy. You know, I was able to buy a you know a foreclosed subdivision in Silang Cavite, no? and one called the unit in Mandaluyong. So I was very happy, you know, to be able to stood up. So as I mentioned, 
when everybody was sleeping and watching Netflix, I was already running around, you know, uh, looking at real estate properties. So. That, that, that's interesting to know. Actually, um, a bit related to what we're discussing right now. Um, let's answer. Let's let's give in to our viewers. Let's answer a few of their questions before we continue. So, um, on screen right now uh, from uh, Miss EJ. Um, oh, this is quite funny. So, so, so her question goes: Sir Nolly, how young were you when you first started investing in properties? Okay, if you have, if I would say that if Dino was a late bloomer, I was a very late bloomer. You know, <laughs> see, when we, were se when we were selling properties in the 1990s, our commissions were spot payment. Because at that time, it was 30% down, 50% down, or spot cash. We didn't have these payment terms of five years, six years, seven years. No? Spot. So we get our full commission in seven days, as in full. Wow. So we were awash with cash. And we were well dust sa cash. And then the Asian financial crisis came in and we all got to realize, that, wow, you know, uh, we, we can't even sell anything anymore. All over the years as we went by, then I got to realize it. So I was a very late bloomer. I think I was already in my, in my 50s already. You know? uh, 55, mga no? Uh, when I started really saying that, you know, I have to start focusing in uh, you know, no, uh, real estate investments. And... Uh, as I mentioned, there were some people tell you you make to be ten percent of your income, okay, and uh, for investments, and you live with your ninety percent. I reversed it. I mm. lived with ten percent, and oh. I invested ninety percent. And every developer I went through, every bank I went through, I would tell them, "Don't pay me in cash, because I might just spend it. <laughs> okay, mm. uh, give it to me in real estate properties." So uh, it was from zero to, you know, green eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for yeah. answering that. How about, um, um, would both of you consider it uh, uh, wise to invest or start investing um, right now with the current state of affairs or the current uh, economy or whatever is um, happening uh, at the time of our, our, our discussion right now? Would you advise people to start? Uh, yes, yes. I Like uh, Sir Nolly said, this is the best time, more so now, um, especially if you're financially capable. Uh, I just want to crack something. No? <laughs> when the uh, pandemic started, people were really kind of scared. The first two months, maybe the first three months, people were really uh, taking their time and... Uh, you know, uh, because there was a commitment that everything would be okay after two months, we will be back to normal, normal after two months. But when everything, um, when after two months, after three months, it looks like it's going to be for a long run, that's mm -hmm. when people started really dusting off, standing up, doing their, their thing. Um, even with Avida, we offered really uh, it's unprecedented. We, we gave unprecedented discounts. Uh, the pattern was longer. And uh, things that we normally don't offer, we offered uh, during this period. So, um, because eventually, like, uh, like though I was very young during this time, <laughs> during the uh, Asian financial crisis, I was very young by that time, <laughs> Sir, Sir Nolly. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, what goes down was, would really go up. Everything will bounce back. And that's the difference between people um, who will uh, take or grab the opportunity now than later is because everything will go back to normal. And when everything is back to normal, the longer pay term will no longer be um, applicable and the discount will not be offered um, anymore. So to answer the question, regardless of the situation that we are in right now i think this and i am a firm believer of this is the best time to invest how about uh mr el subastajero um uh any advice for the people who uh, who are um want to start right now or should they hold off okay i mentioned karina which diana repeated no? it's the best time to buy is now but again, be sure you're not financially challenged now. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've got it, use it. It's the time to use it. Huh? I'll give you an example. Huh? Uh, don't think that cash is king. Right? 
Kasi some people say cash is king. No, leverage today is king. In buying real estate, my God, is the most leveraged asset today. Imagine yung 5 million peso property, but down payment ka ng 25,000. You hold the exclusive rights to purchase that property. You don't still have the ownership, no? But you already own the exclusive rights to buy it. Do you imagine how leveraged that is? 25,000 lang, pero ka lang uh, 5 billion peso property. You just have to, of course, you have to keep paying your monthly amortization, di ba? To, to complete the payments. But that's, that's how leveraged it is, you know? So play with your leverage today. But be sure, you have a cash inflow coming in. Mm. You know, important. Um, now that you mentioned, uh, ironically, uh, Nolly mentioned the word asset, and we have a quest. Uh, we have a question from a viewer named Asset, <laughs> and she asks, "Should I take advantage of the promos right now, or wait for real estate to develop further?" I guess this is more a question of major time bound, eh? Because uh, uh, as we all know, ngayon are a lot of uh, property developers have uh, launched some promos and financing schemes that are quite attractive, so. I guess you could, um, if you could please talk about this um, question by our viewer. Um, okay. If the thing is, uh, I, I don't know if it's something to do with uh, because of the age difference between me and Sir Nolly, but really, um, the <laughs> hi, Sir Nolly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's, um, I'm, I believe that if you are going to let the moment pass, uh, the opportunity will not be the, the same again. Uh, I keep saying this. Um, I don't want to sound like when, when, when we have clients who are still deciding if they're going to buy now because of the situation. The thing is, um, I think even Sir Nolly would agree with me that there's no way for the real estate to go but up. There would be some dips. Yes, of course, there will be some dips. But uh, if it's always the, the upward trend trend and um if you're not going to buy now when are you going to buy when the uh can i just set an example uh the property that i purchased in uh bgc was uh in 2015 it was priced at less than four million and i really prayed about it should they get this do i have the do i have the money what if i resigned what if uh, so that was uh long story short um it was purchased at less than four million that property now in um in bgc is worth almost 10 million mm. so oh. if i didn't have the 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 prayer or the strength to do or make that decision in 20 um 14 15 and bought it now the price difference with such a there's a huge uh price gap so um buying now and buying later it's 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 really up to you but it's the the monetary satisfaction that you will get of the time difference I guess um, this this question um, by our viewer, Mr. Melvin Vivas, can um, connect to what um, Dino is saying. Is his, he asks, "Okay, po ba mag-invest sa BGC ngayon? Para sobra mahal na." Okay, is it okay? Yes, it's okay. It's okay because we still have very attractive pay term. And uh, if I just may add, I don't know if it's who, who was the uh, who asked the question. Me, about, about this one, Melvin. Melvin. Yes, Melvin. Melvin, to convince you further, uh, let me just tell you that the Miss Universe uh, has partnered with Avida BGC. They're currently um, residents of BGC. So while you, while you're walking to get coffee, you might uh, come across <laughs> Rabia. <laughs> or better yet, you might come across me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> <laughs> um uh thank you so much Dinah, for taking the, 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 those questions um how about you Noli? how about uh what what would you what are your thoughts on people um is it the right time now to take advantage of these uh attractive financing schemes or pro, uh, promos and offers from all of these uh, uh properties okay um there there again uh, uh it depends on the reason why you're buying uh. I'll give you an example, no? uh, which uh, Dina was saying. No? BGC is a very good market today. It's a very good rental market. 
but it's not anymore a good market for flipping. Kasi nag-max na siya din, di ba? So if your point is flipping, then you go to Avida Novali or Avida Crescendo, which is launching maybe next year or this year, no? Okay. Sir, not, not Crescendo. Crescendo, you know, That's no, a no, 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 uh, you know, ano, no? uh, depends where you want to get because of your reason. So, kung yan, mag-flip ka, punta ka sa project ng Ayala na hindi pa hilog. Kasi mm. flip ka. Pero kung sabi mo, you want to rent now, like if you get in Arca, okay, uh, medyo mababa pa ang rental doon, mga market, because the commercial heart is not yet there. So, you have right, to find right. the reason. Why are you investing in real estate? You're flipping, you're leasing, you're holding, ba? Or you're using. Kaya yun ang, yun ang mga kailangan pag no? At sa kung may promo ngayon, ay, kung kaya mo, kunin mo na ngayon. Diba? <laughs> Thank you so much ha, for those answers. Um, Actually, I'd just like to take more of our um audience's questions kasi they're really... Uh, they're really interesting. So this question from Joanna McGee, she asks, where are the best places or places you would recommend for people to look at for property investments? Um, let's try to reverse the man. Let's let no, uh, no, uh, El Subastajero answer this first. Okay. Uh, recently, kasi, di ba, the, the move has been talaga to the province areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see do you imagine, like Dina was saying, you know, imagine you're in a condo, it's 28 square meters. Sepe Dina's is 200 square meters. No? So oh, I wish. <laughs> 150 lang, sir. <laughs> oh, so you see, you're 150 buhay ka, pero yung mga iba dyan, nasa 28 square meters sila, two bedroom yun. No? Could you imagine? You have your four kids there, you have your dog, you have your mother in laws there with you. <laughs> talaga, talaga mababaliw ka, no? So people now began going out to the provinces. Uh, Cavite has always been number one in searches for real estate. No? So Cavite, Laguna, Tagaytay is beautiful. You know, If you have a longer waiting period, you can go as far as uh, dito, uh, Batangas. You can go as far as, remember, especially with this uh, SCTEX, the NLEX, SLEX Connector Road, then the NLEX, the SCTEX, the TPLEX. You know, the the market for real estate is just so big for the buying market. Huh? You can pick up anything. Of course, Dina would always say, the South is the best. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. Huh? Dina, how about uh, uh, your answers for this question? Uh, okay, that's that's a, that's a nice thing about uh, Avida because we have... Uh, Properties all over Manila, all, all over the Philippines. Like, uh, if you want to go nor up north, there is our property in Pampanga, which I have to say, uh, I have to follow through what Sir Nolly said that, uh, yes, people, we've noticed that. We've noticed that our uh, sales for house and lot properties in Alviera has really gone up, even in Bulacan. Um, we even have uh, properties in Cabanatuan and Tugigarao. Now, for down south, we also have properties there. Uh, we, we start as uh, the, the nearest that we have in the south is Alabang and all the way to Batangas. So our Batangas and even Sir, Sir um, Noli is correct that really our properties in Vermosa, uh, we call it the Vera uh, property, is has really gone up because uh, the, really the confinement in, in um, thank God, well, uh, it's just me and my husband, we don't have children. So uh, the 100 square meters, no, it's, it's just smaller. It's a small property is okay with us. But um, now, uh, going back to the investment, uh, it really depends. Also, uh, Sir said, what do you what do you want from the investment that you will be putting? If you want, uh, like, we have cause properties, uh, projects in uh, Manila. That's uh, Abida Towers, Prime Taft. That's along the university area. That's very near uh, La Salle. Now, if you are the investment if you are from other countries, especially in Singapore, our clients in Singapore, they're very, I think Makati is the place that they know in the Philippines. And we have several properties in um, 
Makati. We have actually um, new property that we will be launching. Um, it's 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 a very interesting. Uh, it's a very nice project. And also, of course, the BGC. Uh, I think the millennials are more interested in the BGC project because the, the economy has, has already started and it's very um, up and coming and running, I mean. Right, right. So I, I think um, with the, that, those answers were also uh, suitable for another question from Mr. Melvin Divas. He was asking what proper areas are hot right now so i think let's take one more uh a few more questions from our viewers so we have one from uh nico magalona i think this is a bit more um a bit more specific he asks why is there a difference between the issue price and the redemption price i think this is more for um sir, sir Don. Don. yeah issue price i no, no i don't think so that would be uh I don't know where he's coming from, no. But the redemption price was um, if this is a foreclosure, then no uh, mm. one year redemption period, you know. No? Um, but I don't think this is the end. No? Uh, the place to talk about foreclosures, as if Ah, okay, okay, understood, understood. Actually, you had another. I guess your your reputation uh, precedes you, because we also have another question from uh, Joanna Bauson, and she asks, "How do you invest in foreclosures?" And does one need big money to invest in foreclosures uh, for that okay. matter? Maybe I will ask all oh, my home <laughs> to <laughs> invite me again to speak on foreclosures. Uh, I'd be more than willing to come back to all of you for this show. <laughs> ah, good, uh, good answer, um, Sir Nolly. We'll, we'll be quite uh, happy to have you back again. Um, before we move on to our next question uh, from a, uh, from from our list, now another question from our viewer, Tyron Soli says, uh, "Hi, Nolly. Curious on the name of the condo you bought in Mandaluyong." <laughs> oh, okay, uh, I got that from the Gardens Condominium. Uh, it's beautiful because it's facing the golf course of Wak Wak. Mm -hmm. Comparing it to another condo of a, a hotel branded name, nah? that's also facing the uh, golf course. <laughs> and it's uh, 350,000 per square. And I, I picked up mine for 70,000 per square. Nah? Wow. wow. Uh, same view. You know, same view. Nah? One fifth. Again, uh, That's for culture, so I think we can bring that to another place. I think Dina knows who the developer I'm talking about. That's why yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so actually, those um, I, that rounds up the number of questions from our audience so far. Let's, and and, and uh, I'll just like to proceed with the last few questions we have for our webinar. Um. I think we've touched on this earlier on, but I think it's good to um, reiterate at the, this one hour mark of our show. So for both of you, why is it important to try to gain uh, this passive income as early as possible? You both mentioned that both of you were late bloomers, so to speak. So um, if you were had a chance, if you had a chance to talk to a younger version of yourself, how would you convince yourself? <laughs> <laughs> to start earlier in investing. <laughs> Let's yeah, say 25 years old. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's a very, uh, no, no, that's a, thank you for that wonderful question, <laughs> Julian. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> pageant. <laughs> yeah, pageant. Yeah, but, um, okay, unless you have inheritance or a saving that would outlast you, um, because this, I, I, I think, because I think I'm getting in that, point in my life or um my my working my working uh time is limited um as you grow older you don't want to be dependent to um to anyone uh, i've seen that with my parents they are um very very independent from us when it comes to the financial so um if you don't have uh inheritance from that you will be getting like so many millions or savings that 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 will outlast you um 
passive income is really uh, needed by everyone. And because we don't want, to, at the end of the day, we don't want to be a burden to anyone. We don't want to be a burden to our children, to our nieces and nephews. Um, we don't. We want to be uh, active or uh, relevant citizen of the of the world or the country. So. Re, uh, re regardless if you're retiring early or you're retiring retiring late, um, a passive income will always be helpful for you. I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you got my vote. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, um, Sonali? Okay. Um, talking to a younger version of me, uh, I think I'll ask him to just become wilder. <laughs> ah. <laughs> no, but seriously, no. Um, I've always uh, told the young generation, younger generation, no? why look at passive when you can become aggressive? Mm. When you're passive income, you're only contributing a small portion of your energies to make this world a better place to live in. And world peace. <laughs> <laughs> diba? Uh, kasi, I would tell people, you go out there and build. Don't just buy, build it. Because every time you build, you're helping the economy really jump up. Kasi pa nag-build ka, you have a carpenter, you have a cantero, you have tuero, you have a plumber, you have an electrician, you know, you're buying uh, nails, wood, steel, cement, sand, complete, you know, the, the multiplicative factor is fantastic, you know, when you build. But meanwhile, you're preparing for your passive income because you're young. You have the energy to do all of this. But meanwhile, you're making, you know, uh, puhunan. You're now building your capital to be able to start investing in your next phase for your passive income. But if you want to be a titan, you have to add value to the economy. That's the only way. Oh, very, very wise words from both of you. We have another um, question from the audience uh, from uh, Mr. Brawls. Um, okay, the question is, is flipping property ideal now during uh, this pandemic? And has this current uh, situation affected the cost of renovations? Okay, maybe let me pick this up. No? <clears throat> just, just, uh, there's many ways of flipping a property. Maybe you're touching on my expertise area, flipping for closed properties. No? Excuse me. Um, I will maybe relate it to what Diana can also relate to, which is more, which we call flipping from off the plans to turn over. No? Uh, you can see that she had mentioned, no? that when you buy a real estate property in a branded developer, you get from the day you sign the pre-selling up to the day you do the turnover of the unit in your bank financing, your wealth has already increased 70%. Remember, uh, the value of your asset that you bought increased by 70%, but you have only brought out 30%. Mm. So you do the math of how big your increase was. And that's what I call the best flipping. Safe because konti lang ang nilabas mo, 30% lang. But be sure you're the 70% ready when the day comes for bank financing. So mm -hmm. you're not exciting that. Now, what's happening now in the market is what they call the pasalo. That's very famous. No? In other words, uh, Catch me if you can. Uh, mga safety nets. Because a lot of them who did the 30% down payable over five years are right now not anymore bankable to mm. be able to get a bank loan to pay for the 70%. So that is maybe the effect on it. No? Uh, that can be negative to that. But if I were you, I would look at, if you're talking about the cost of renovation, I tell you, it has gone down a lot also, the cost of renovation, because the competition among the contractors is tremendous. I was renovating a house, and I put an ad on this group page of contractors, builders, architects. You know, no? I got 215 you know, responses. My wow. messenger was, was so full. I was, 
I was astounded by it, di ba? Pati Cantero, Tubero, sila na rin mismo nag, nag-message na rin. So, it has gone down a lot because there is a lot of uh, demand more than uh, supply of construction and jobs. Right, That's right, it. right. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Um, I, uh, it looks like we have another. Uh, okay, is there a... Oh, okay, okay, okay. We have another question, but again, this is more specific to foreclosures. I think we may be close to that point that we are going to be having another schedule with uh, Mr. Noli Alie about this. It's quite popular, apparently, on our uh, inbox. It's about several questions on foreclosures alone. But anyway, um, before we close the program, I'd like to ask both of you this question. Um, can you share easy and practical tips on how um, our viewers... Um, can be smarter about their finances. And um, uh, I guess this is more of a question to those people na really want to start down that path of property investments. How, what small steps can they take, practical steps that they can take um, to get on that, uh, on that way? Okay. Um, the tip I could give uh, those who haven't started yet is uh, Filipinos or... Um, the millennials or whoever wants to start um, investing should have a shift on their paradigm. Mm -hmm. uh, the goal is to be rich and not to look rich. Um, and like I've said, I'm a late bloomer and uh, I used to be guilty of this. I would invest on things that are easily <laughs> depreciatable, like uh, maybe a phone, a bag, or what have you. But... Um, we should hold on to something that uh, would outlast or uh, hold on to the test of time, and that would be real estate. And um, it's it's very basic, and uh, you don't have to spend more than you earn or spend more than uh, you can. So uh, keep the eye on the ball, which is to look rich. And uh, well, to be rich and not to look rich. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Diana. How about uh, Mr. Nolly? Um, any any tips, practical tips that the, our viewers could take? Okay, uh, my my dog was telling me what to tell. So <laughs> sorry about sorry about that. You know. Anyway, you know, buying real estate is one of the most exciting things that you can do. It's a uh, it's a family thing. You know, don't do it by yourself. Uh, because if you do it by yourself, and then you surprise your wife, and your wife is not happy with the property, <laughs> you know, then there it goes. So it's it's a family thing of investing in real estate. And you have to really do your due diligence. Don't just buy because you want to buy a real estate property. Don't buy because you saw a fantastic, you know, Facebook page with all these animations jumping up and down, you know. Do your due diligence of the area. Diba? Kasi iba dyan, paganda ka ng animation eh. Kasi <laughs> dating yung project. <laughs> diba? Magugulat ka. Diba? So, ako, you want it easy? Like they always say, do your homework. After I say, funny nga, diba? Uh, when sometimes when people want to buy a car, they really look at the car very well, you know? They open the engine. You think they understand them on the hood, diba? They look at the engine. They kick the tires. You know, you think that there's something to do with kicking the tires, diba? Parang, ano, no? But when they buy a house or they buy invest in real estate properties, they just pick, they just buy. Mm. Why? Because it's twenty five thousand, fifty thousand on reservation, and then easy come in, diba? Then right. hard to get out. You see, if you're buying for a flip, for people who are asking for flipping, diba? If you're buying for a flip, you have to know your exit and the use. Like I said, diba? If your use is rentals. Then look for a place that's got really good job opportunities because they're the ones who are going to rent from you. If you're looking at flipping a property, di dapat ang harap mo dyan yung may appreciation at saka mm. merong positive migration in that area. No? Now, if you're, if you're looking naman at a simple uh, holding or keep or using, then you look at the facilities. Don't look at it today. Look at it tomorrow. Mm. It's like, does the Avida project in the south? Are there going to be 
churches near it? Is there going to be a mall? It may not be there yet, diba? but you're looking at the future of what your family needs in the future. Yeah, they're going to have all of that. No? So always remember, when you come in, there's an exit. Except, of course, it's a marriage. Well, <laughs> it's a marriage. Okay. You don't plan that. It just happens. <laughs> okay. So, you know, uh, always, ano ba ang ending mo? Importante, pagpasok mo. Right. I think those are really, really great words. And yung commonality of your um, answers was really clear na having that objective, whether it's you know, being successful, rich, or, uh, or even objective of um, really finding out what are you trying to invest on? Um, like, is it now for rental or for flipping or, or what have you? Um, and both, again, were great um, answers. Um, and thank you so much for all the great words of advice and insight. And unfortunately, that's all the time we have left for today. So before we close, um, for Mr. Nolly and Ms. Dinah, do you have any um, parting words or any other things you want to say to our viewers? Any upcoming projects, um, personal or professional, that you want to share with them? Um, Ms. Dinah, would you want to uh, share anything with our audience? Yes, okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you, uh, Oh My Home, for the opportunity really to um, invite me. Um, and this is something I'm very passionate about. And uh, I'm with Avida, like you've said in your introduction, and we have so many um, new offerings that we can uh, give to our clients. Uh, Currently, we have a new launch, like I've said, in Makati, which is called uh, Avida Tower South Point. And we also have in BGC, uh, we still have uh, properties there and still affordable for some. And we also have a property in um, Tagaytay that you can uh, start investing on. And also, uh, we, like I've said, it's a whole Philippines we have properties in all the Philippines and we would be happy to assist you. We would connect you to the right um, project. Whatever assistance you may need, we will be there to help you. And uh, like my mentor, I have a mentor in the office. I, unfortunately, he can't be here, Sir Ed Del Valle. I hope you're watching. Uh, Sir, Ed, the, Sir Ed, um, he always tells me this. If you're not going to do it now, when are you going to do it? So while we're still young, Sir Nolly, <laughs> while we're still young uh, and able, let's do the necessary. And by God's grace, uh, let's take the first step in invest. Uh, any last words, uh, Mr. Nolly? Okay. Uh, well, I'd like to thank you, Julian and Diana, uh, for being with me in this uh, show. No? And to Miss uh, Race Wong, I think she's the head of your company in... Uh, yeah, she's Singapore. our co-founder. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. Co so thank you so much for the invite. And I'd like to thank all my uh, my cousins, my auntie, my uncle, <laughs> and my Nola for all the uh, for all the nice words of what you put in the text there. No? <laughs> anyway, just guys, remember, property is prosperity is the best way to start your life to financial independence. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much to the both of you. We really, really enjoyed myself. I really enjoyed this chat with you. Mm -hmm. And and by the way, our comment section is going. Uh, a lot of people have enjoyed the session as well. Uh, thank you so much, Sir Nolly, Miss Dinah. It has been thank a you. pleasure to host you today. Thank you. We hope that we can speak to you again soon. Uh, thank you very much, both of you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I hope that um, everybody who was watching was well informed of um, property investments. And, and, and I, we hope at Oh My Home that you had already started the journey with Oh My Home by checking out our platforms. And before we end, I'd just like again to remind everybody to check out the Oh My Home app available on the Apple and Google Play Store, as well as on our website, www.ohmyhome.com slash n-ph for all your property needs. If you're looking to buy, sell, or rent, we can be with you at every step of the property journey. And again, please watch out for the next episode of Otox. 
And just watch our Facebook channel or page for details on that. And that's it for Otox from all of us here at Oh My Home. This is Julian signing off. Thank you very much and have a great day. Is Oh My Home expanding to the Philippines? The goal of Oh My Home is to be a global player in taking care of everyone's housing transaction journey, starting with the buying, selling, and renting of their homes, and every step after, including the renovation and maintenance of their homes. In Singapore, Oh My Home is a market leader in providing a one-stop shop property solution when it comes to buy, sell, or rent. We're a unique business model, which enables us to provide you with a DIY do-it-yourself solution, as well as a full-fledged agency service. Expanding to the Philippines is a logical next step for Oh My Home. In Manila alone, in the last three years, we've seen an increase of 11.9% on condominium property prices every single year. And in terms of number of transactions, we have also seen it steadily climbing. So in 2018, there's a record of 54,000 condominium transactions, surpassing the previous year of 53,000 condominium transactions. And with such a huge population, it's only natural that only using reliable technology, with advanced technology, we're able to extend fast, reliable, efficient service to everyone. And in fact, we are not new in Philippines. We actually have an office in Manila for the last three years, and most of our tech team members are Filipinos. So extending our services to Filipinos, it's actually a dream come true for my team. So we're so excited about this. <laughs>